Welcome to our lecture online. Here we have an interesting problem where we're dropping an object from a height of 10 meters onto a spring. The spring has a spring constant of 500 newtons per meter and will be compressed a certain distance before the object comes to complete rest with a final velocity equal to zero. And the question is, how far has a spring been compressed? The mass is five kilograms and it starts, the object starts at rest as well. Here, the energy equation is perfect for a problem like this. We can say that the energy initial equals the energy final, which means that any work put into the system, plus any initial potential energy, plus any initial kinetic energy, must add up to the final potential energy, plus final kinetic energy, plus any heat lost due to friction. Right away we realize that there's no work put into the system. Once we let the system go, there's nothing pushing the object, anything like that, so there's no work put into the system. How about initial potential energy? And the answer is yes, because it has a certain height. Now what we could do is we could have a reference height right here, which is equal to the position where the object will finally end up. So we have a height of 10 meters, plus we have an additional distance, which we don't know yet, it's equal to x. And so we can say that this is the total height of the object. So h total, h total, is simply equal to h plus x, which means that the initial potential energy it has is equal to m times g times h plus x. Kinetic energy is going to be zero, not add that because, of course, it's not moving initially. Then when it gets to its final resting place, and of course, if we then continue with the time, the object would bounce back up because of the energy stored in the spring, but at least this would be the final position for our problem, and therefore the final potential energy would be the energy stored in the spring, and that is going to be equal to one half the spring constant times x squared, there's not going to be any kinetic energy at the end because its velocity will be zero, and there's no friction, so there's no heat loss due to friction. What we have to do here is take that equation and solve it for x. So let's go ahead and multiply this out, get rid of parentheses first. So we get mgh plus mgx is equal to one half kx squared. And it looks like we're going to end up with a quadratic equation. So let's move everything over to one side. So I have zero is equal to one half kx squared minus mgx minus mgh. Now let's plug in the numbers so we can actually solve that quadratic equation. We we'll end up with zero equals one half times k, which is 500, times x squared minus m m is 5, g is 9.8, times x minus m, which is 5, g 9.8, and h is equal to 10. So simplifying that, we get 0 is equal to 250x squared minus 49x and minus 490. And that's the quadratic equation that we can solve. So x equals minus b, which is 49, plus or minus the square root of 49 squared, b squared minus 4, times a, which is 250, times c, which is a minus 490, and the whole thing divided by 2 times a, which is 2 times 250. All right, now we're ready to solve that using our calculator. Starting with what's inside the radical, we have 4 times 250 times 490. Notice that the negative sign will cancel out that negative sign. We add to that 49 squared. And then we take the square root of that. And so this ends up being x is equal to 49 plus or minus, the, oh, plus or minus not the square root, 701.7, all divided by 500. All right, so I don't think the negative is one possible answer because x would then be a negative distance, and we can only have a positive distance here. 
So that means the only viable solution would be when I add those two together. So if I add plus 49 and then divide that by 500, the only plausible solution is that x is equal to 1.5 meters. And that is the only real possible answer for this particular problem. And that's how it's done.